Welcome to Flashback Tracks. Travel back in time each Friday to an era of big hair, leg warmers, and Walkmans. Far out. Veg out with some clips from Downtime Broadcasting's promotional audio cassette magazine from the 80s and 90s, right here on the World Wide Web. Selecting the right sales incentive is a job you're often called upon to help a client do. Recognition awards, motivational programs are just two areas of distributor expertise. Here's interesting listening. Reprinted with permission, Business Marketing, Crane Communications Incorporated, copyright 1986. Choosing the right incentive. Although virtually all incentive programs boil down to awards based on cash, merchandise, travel, recognition, or some combination of the above, designing a program that will meet specific marketing objectives is no plug and chug endeavor. Careful planning which balances the program's budget against its goals is essential. The point of any sales incentive program is to enhance salespeople's performance and the bottom line. Therefore, an overly expensive program or one that fails to motivate participants defeats its own purpose. To avoid the pitfalls of the various incentive programs and maximize cost effectiveness, marketers need to understand the advantages and disadvantages of each kind of program. Perhaps the easiest incentive program to implement is one based on cash. Because bonus checks can be generated through the marketer's accounting department, cash-based programs require comparatively little administration and virtually no knowledge of incentive program esoterica. However, the same features that make cash-based programs easy to implement can undermine their motivational value. The one positive about cash is that everybody loves money, says Tim Jackson, Chicago-based regional VP with Top Value Enterprises Incorporated, a travel and merchandise incentive supplier. The downside is that people confuse it with compensation. Once you've given them cash, it's hard to take it away. Cash is probably the worst motivator in the world. Because commissioned salespeople automatically receive extra cash when they sell more, cash doesn't create an awful lot of excitement, says George Meredith, executive director of the Association of Retail Marketing Services. In addition, cash doesn't have recognition value. You use it to pay the gas bill or the grocery bill, you're not going to show the check to your neighbor and say, look at what I won. Nevertheless, cash remains a trusted standby, and about one-third of the marketers who use incentive programs offer at least some cash awards, according to Mr. Meredith. The Merchandise Option Merchandise awards also were popular among incentive program planners. Although more complicated to administer than cash-based incentive programs, merchandise can spur genuine enthusiasm among participants. In addition, merchandise awards offer recognition for a job well done, an important part of any incentive program. The key thing with merchandise is that it has a great deal of trophy value, top values Mr. Jackson says. He adds that winning television sets, stereos, and the like not only gives participants something to brag about, but helps them recall every detail of performance associated with winning. The downside with merchandise awards is that their price-value relationship may not be optimal. Most incentive merchandise suppliers buy merchandise wholesale and mark products up to retail price levels, making the products more expensive than if purchased through a discount house. In addition, incentive program planners must be careful to offer merchandise that participants will want to win. Video cassette recorders, for example, are more likely to motivate young urban salespeople than are lawnmowers. Experts observe that the rest and recreation associated with incentive travel appeals even to salespeople who are frequently on the road. And although travel is more ethereal than merchandise or cash, memories from trips to exotic locales hold personal and trophy value. Travel has very strong appeal, says Mr. Meredith of the Association of Retail Marketing Services, but it does have some limitations. A good travel program requires an extensive selling period to justify its expense. In addition, administering a travel program takes a lot of work, and it may damage morale if only a few participants have a chance to win the grand prize trip. As a rule of thumb, sales executives like to see 50% of the people in an incentive program win something. And that's very hard to do with travel programs, given their cost, Mr. Meredith says. Travel programs need not generate feelings of resentment among near winners, however. By including lesser travel awards, such as weekend junkets for those who don't qualify for the grand prize trip, such programs can keep everybody happy. As for the value of memories, some experts are skeptical. 
After you return from Hawaii, all that's left is the peeling skin on your nose, says Robert S. Yassin, Vice President and General Manager with the Recognition Products Group of LG Balfour Company, Attleboro, Massachusetts. The Recognition Factor Mr. Yassin contends that salespeople, especially those with achievement, are motivated by peer recognition by cash, merchandise, or travel awards. Comparing superstar salespeople with professional athletes, Mr. Yassin says there's a point where the money doesn't mean that much. The recognition is that championship ring. That's what they're playing for. Especially for salespeople in lucrative markets, recognition awards such as personalized jewelry, platinum trophies, can enhance performance, often at less cost than complex merchandise or travel award programs. Depending on the marketer, some combination of cash, travel, merchandise, and recognition awards may do the best job of spurring program participants. William Ravis Real Estate, Fairfield, Connecticut, for example, developed an incentive program in which female agents receive a bracelet and a number one charm to recognize their first $1 million in sales. Each subsequent $1 million in sales brings the agent another charm, and when the bracelet is loaded with 28 charms, the agent receives a trip for two around the world. William Ravis, the company's founder and president, views that as both an incentive and a recognition program. What's so nice about it is that the people who have the most ones on their bracelet feel that they are the most successful. They really tend to wave their hands in front of people. And they have more credibility with customers. That's the key. If they feel confidence within themselves, they'll go that extra mile for you. Travel back in time with us next Friday as we share more clips from the 80s and 90s on another rad episode of Flashback Tracks, exclusively on Promo Corner. Time to bounce.